Yo, what's going on you guys? I am walking over here to my 2019 Toyota Tacoma to give you a walk around and show you my ultimate overlanding rig or ultimate hunting truck, whatever you prefer. But to me, it's my ultimate hunting truck. And I just want to show you guys what we've done. I know this is a, a channel that's dedicated to outdoorsmen and hunting and, you know, being outside. So because we're doing it every weekend, why not show you the rig that, rig that gets us around the most? So again, 2019 Toyota Tacoma, it is the SR5, which that's the base model. If all of you guys know, uh, we didn't go with the TRD Pro just because at the time that was the option that was available and it made the most sense. This truck when we bought it was used and pre-owned and nothing that's on it now was on it when we purchased it besides the, the wheels. So we'll get into you know what kind of upgrades we've done, if the truck has been reliable or not, and yeah, hopefully you like the video and you can leave a comment. Definitely like and subscribe, but let's get into the truck. So 2019 Toyota Tacoma SR5, has it been good? Was it worth the money? Uh, short and simple answer is awesome truck, totally worth the money. It will last a long, long time. We've had zero issues with this thing, and knock on wood, we think and believe it's gonna be that same way for a long, long time. So, <laughs> uh, definitely worth the money. Now, when we purchased the truck, there were there were a couple upgrades, but they're actually upgrades that we took away. And to start out with the basics, we had a K&N air intake in there from the previous owner, as well as a uh, MagnaFlow ex exhaust system. And then we had the Icon wheels. Now, we had noticed, and after a lot of research YouTubing, and thanks for all the YouTubers out there that gave me this information, the Canaan air intake, it, it actually decreased my gas mileage substantially. So, you know, I was getting like 15, 14, 16 miles of the gallon, depending on how I drove, and that just sucked. I had a Tacoma before, and I got like 23 miles of the gallon, 19 to 23, and that's where I knew that I should be. Um, so the only thing that I could think of was the air intake and the exhaust system. And of course, right when I took it off and I went back to stock, my gas mileage shot right back up to that 20 mile an hour mark, 19, mile a gallon, uh, 19 miles per gallon mark. And that's where I wanted to be. So we took those off, we kept them off. And to give you a preface, this truck right now has right around 68,000 miles on it. And when we purchased the truck, it had 23,000 miles on it. So we do drive it. We've owned it for a little over a year and a half. But as you can see, like we're, we're putting miles on this truck and we are using it for what it's intended to be used for, which is getting out in the mountains. Um, but to go through some of the basic upgrades, to start off, um, we have a CBI front bumper. So I'll show you this first. We have the CBI Baja front bumper. This thing has been awesome. It's just a beefy front bumper. We have a worn 13,500 pound winch, which I know that's excessive, but it was on sale. So why not go big or go home? We have a, uh, uh, what, I think that's a Black Series Rough Country 20 inch light bar, which it's okay. Um, you know, it's probably not the best one you can buy, but for what we're using it for, it totally works just fine. And then we did upgrade the headlights. So not the actual headlights themselves, those are OEM, but we did go with the Oracle LED bulbs, which if you haven't already, you need to check them out. Oracle makes an awesome, less expensive bulb than like Marimoto and they make a massive difference. I mean, it's almost like useful or useless to even have low beams in my truck now. <laughs> Seriously, they're awesome. So definitely check those out. Now to continue the walk around, I'm gonna stay on this side of the truck just because of the sun. Um, to continue this, we went with a 285 7017. So this tire is a Geolander um it's a yokohama geolander all-terrain they also make a geolander all-terrain x as well as a mud terrain we went the all-terrain just because i picked this up on a sweet deal i bought five tires you know so four tires plus a spare for 500 bucks so 100 dollars a tire and if you know anything about these tires they are incredibly incredibly expensive tires um, so that's really the main reason why we ended up going with this tire because it was time for new ones. I wanted to go a little bit bigger than what stock is, which is 280 or 265 70 17. Um, it's actually a 16 inch rim is stock, but the person had the 17 inch rim. So we've stuck with that. But anyways, the tire has been great. Uh, the tread pattern, like, you know, call it aggressive or not I'll try to zoom in here for you. That's the tread pattern. So it's super, you know, it's super um, minimalist in regards to, uh, 
you know, traction. Like it doesn't have those big blocks that you see on a mud terrain tire, but it still gives you enough to get through, you know, to get through any kind of nasty situation that you might be in. So it's worked for us. I'll probably go with the Meteor tire on the next uh, purchase, but for now, these are gonna work just fine. So 285, 7017s, these are 33s, or like 32.88 or nine or whatever. So they're really 33s. It definitely made a difference on the stance of the truck. So I know it's hard to tell because it's not a stock truck, but the stance of the truck is a lot better and bigger than what stock is. Um, now some people, they have a <clears throat> challenge regarding the tires rubbing. I know that sun is horrible. Uh, regarding the tires rubbing in the back down here in the fender wheel. Now, granted, you know, we do have suspension on this, which I'm about to talk about. We really don't have that problem. Like the only time we get rubbing is when we're like totally cranked one way or another and we are going through a dip. That will cause a little bit of rubbing, but it's really not that bad. So it's a problem, but it's not something that's like been such a problem that I'm worried about my tires popping or I'm worried about clearance or anything like that. Uh, I've been told that I should do a, a body chop mount and it's like 250 a side, which I'll probably do that later on. But for now, this has been working just fine. So we're going to keep it the way it is. And I know that these tires wouldn't fit if we didn't upgrade our suspension. So to get into the suspension, first and foremost, uh, I had a uh, Tacoma previously and what I had used on that Tacoma was the Icon. It was the, the highest end suspension that you could even buy. So it was like the stage nine suspension, remote reservoirs, upper control arms, you know, uh, leaf pack, everything. I did not use that suspension the way that it could have been used. So with this rig, we just wanted the stage one front and rear icon suspension, no remote reservoirs. The truck still handles awesome. I really am a big believer that the icon is probably one of the better suspension kits for this size truck. They just do a really good job on it. At least I'm sold to that, but we did get away from the upper control arm. So we once had Icon upper control arms and we we're like, this sucked it's because of that stupid polyurethane bushing that just squeaked all the freaking time that you constantly had to grease. So my local four wheel drive parts, shout out to you, Daniel over there at parts counter, you're freaking the bomb. Uh, he told me to go with the Elevate upper control arm. So the Elevate upper control arm is this system here. It's a uniball uh, with a enclosed gasket. And long story short, the, your, the bushing that they use is not polyurethane, so it doesn't squeak and you don't have to grease it. I really like this system. If you're thinking about going with a suspension kit, you have to get upper control arms if you wanna go with bigger tires. Do the Elevate suspension, they're a little bit newer, but I've had zero issues with this and they've been working freaking amazing. So. We went with the Elevate upper control arm. Our suspension, again, is the Icon Vehicle Dynamics. It's the stage one, which is the simplest you can go, but it does make a massive difference in ride quality. And when you're you know, bouncing around in the mountains, looking for animals, hunting, scouting, doing whatever you're doing, it makes a big difference to be able to have a vehicle that will handle well and doesn't just beat the crap out of you like 99% of vehicles do. So that's our front end. It really has been working well. To move into the back, um, same exact thing. We have a rear icon suspension <clears throat> uh, in the rear, but we did do an add a leaf. So instead of getting the whole uh, leaf spring pack and replacing all of it, all I decided to do was the add a leaf. And the reason why I did the add a leaf versus the whole entire pack is because. I wanted to see if there was a difference. You know, of course, the stock pack doing a lot of towing, doing a lot of bouncing around, like that is not, it's not built for that purpose. So I wanted to do something. I just didn't know if I wanted to spend all that extra money and if it really made a difference to change out all my leafs. So I went with the, the single stack 800 pound add a leaf and massive difference, so much better quality of towing, like, I'm telling you guys, if you tow with your Toyota Tacoma, if you put a lot of weight in the rear end, you need to do this. It's gonna make a massive difference in the drive quality and your towing quality. That's the biggest thing that I see the difference in. And it does give you a little boost in um, height, clearance. So you get like a two and a half inch lift, 
with the Atta Leaf and the Icon set, which we really, really like. So yeah, that in short is what we've done in the rear end. Now I did go back to a stock exhaust system. I told you guys earlier that I went away with the items that the, the other individual uh, had on this truck. Uh, the stock exhaust, because I'm a hunter, I don't want a loud, roughly, muffly truck. So the stock exhaust is actually the quietest exhaust that you can get for a Tacoma, which that's why we went back to stock. Now, I'm, sh I'm, I'm almost there, because to what you guys want to see is probably the camper shell. But we have a, um, I forget the brand of this. It's crazy because I just talked about it, but and it'll come to me. It's a Fab Four's uh, back rear bumper. Now the thing that I want to just touch on really quick, if you tow a lot with your truck, um, definitely make sure that you don't get the hitch mount underneath the license plate, okay? Get the one that is mounted underneath the license plate. Now, I've had some clearance issues, like bouncing around in the mountains, like hitting rivets and divots. Like if your hitch, if you have a tow away hitch that drops down, that could be an issue. So I always have to uh, like take my hitch out because I don't want it hitting, I don't want it hitting and unearthing rocks, which it literally has before. Actually, I'll give you a, a little uh, pointer. I don't know if you can see that, you guys. That black mark is because it was rubbing here because of exactly what I just said. I hit a rock, my hitch moved up the, the rear bumper, and then when I flipped my tailgate down, it would rub. So, you know, for whatever it means. But long story short, this makes a big difference in um, your towing, like how level your, your towing setup is. So I tow a side-by-side -side with that trailer, which that's an aluminum trailer. It's like, a, I think it's 14 feet or 12 feet long, and it's a pretty lightweight trailer. It's only like 600 pounds, but with the side-by-side -side and then all my hunting gear, like it adds up. And previously to my last Tacoma, my, the front end of my hitch and the front end of my rig was like so slanted. So that was a big pain in the butt. I know I got a drop away hitch for that to kind of solve that, but this has just been an easier setup. So if you're thinking about going with a, uh, a new um, rear bumper, I just, Encourage you to look at that setup over the one that's mounted in the tailgate. Yeah, it depends on how much you use it. I use it a lot. Might not be as important to you, but that's just my setup. So um, to kind of back up, show you guys this side. Oh, and then I also wanted to keep this thing dirty because that's how it looks all the time. You know, like we're using this truck for what it's designed to be used for. And that means bouncing around in the mountains, like it's winter time right now. So as you can imagine, there's gonna be dirt and mud and whatnot on this truck. So that's kind of the walk around of the truck. You know, you might be questioning what kind of camper that is. I did too. Um, this is a new addition to the truck as of like, not even a week ago. Uh, it's an aluminum man-made bumper that came off of a first gen Toyota Tacoma. So funny enough, the guy had it listed on Facebook Marketplace and I messaged him and said, hey, what kind of, um, what kind of topper is that? I've never seen it before. And he said, ah, man, I made it. And I said, no way. And he's like, yeah, are you interested? And I said, if it fit a third gen Tacoma, kind of thinking in my mind, oh, this thing's not going to fit. And sure as heck, we did some measurements. And two days, three days later, I was up purchasing this topper because it's something that we wanted. You know, I, I did have a Lear camper on this thing before uh, I put the, the aluminum camper on. And it was really solid. I like to have my, my gear covered up, which that the Lear camper did that but it still didn't solve my sleep solution, which this did. So I don't know if it's worth me setting this up for you guys. I might do it really quick just to show you what it looks like, but I will kind of give you guys the, the remaining walk around and we'll do that last. The camper has been freaking sweet. Now I've ran into some issues with the camper up to this point. Um, you know, obviously it has your, your rear locking latches that you know all of them have on hinges. It's all aluminum, so this is a cool camper because because it is all aluminum, it's super light. So it only came in at like 245 pounds, the topper itself, which that is super light for a, a four season camper with a bed. Now, if you guys know anything about these campers, the windows are like an additional, like a couple thousand dollars in like the Go Fast campers and the Habitat campers. And I looked at those campers for a long time and I didn't buy them because I just thought that they were ridiculously priced. So in this camper, the, the one that he made that's on the back of this truck, there's not a brand, it's a homemade camper. 
He added both the windows and he added the rear window, which we like that because we have our dogs usually riding in the back so we can open up our rear window and then they can kind of talk to us right from the back. It's kind of funny. Um, but long story short, this is what the camper looks like. He built this whole camper out of this super cool C channel. So he had an idea is like anything that you want to add as additions to this camper, you can with C channel. So that bolt and nut that you're seeing right there, that is a prime example of ways that you can hook up different items to the C channel inside of your camper, which I really freaking like that. I got to admit, I like that a lot, but again, let's, uh, let's set this up for you guys. Let me show you what it looks like set up. Bear with me. Got to extend the tripod here. I really have liked it. It's lightweight. We're run, you know, the only issues that we really ran into here are just just mounting it completely to the truck. That's been something that we've got to figure out. Uh, we have the clamps that all of them do have, but a Lear camper or most other campers, they actually have a um, they actually have a direct mount into the bed of the truck, which that does not yet. So I'm still trying to figure that out, but let me show you guys how this works. Super simple. Um, pop up here. There's two little clips. You unclip them. And that's it. So pretty sweet. Uh, the guy that made this thing, obviously, pretty freaking trick. It's uh, made out of like a Cordora, Cordora and a canvas material. And then all of the windows, they actually uh, unzip from the inside. So you have the three windows for in the summertime when it's super hot, you can pull those down. And then it also has this uh, additional flap for rain, which has been really cool. You know, um, I think he did a really good job on it. I'm still shocked that this thing actually fit our truck. Um, you know, it's... <laughs> It's rare to find these things under like seven grand. And we picked this thing up for just 3,500 bucks. And then we sold our Lear camper for four or 1,500 bucks. So, you know, you do the math on that. Like we didn't even pay two grand for this camper after it was all said and done. And that is really, really cool. So I'll show you guys the last and final kind of touch to the truck. Um, just this little guy, you know, when you get up inside of here uh, let me do this for you it becomes difficult to shut the tailgate right so that's what this is for it allows you to bloop shut the tailgate from inside and then to kind of give you guys the last little show uh, this is what it looks like inside now you know you might be wondering what that gap is we're gonna put a full hinge on that gap just to completely close it off. It doesn't, it overlaps, so there'll never be rain or weather or anything in there. And it actually allows for a little bit of airflow in here because of the condensation. That's the one problem with all these campers is they get condensation. So that's a way to combat that. But we have an LED strip up top. Can't really see it because it's hidden, but that lights this whole thing up when we're in here just kind of hanging out and chilling. So. For what it matters, that's four by six, plenty big for us and two dogs. Although we do put our dogs down here at night and then we sleep up top. Um, that's really it. That's that's the uh, ultimate overlanding Toyota Tacoma. Uh, I think we did this whole entire truck for, geez, I don't know, probably eight, nine grand. I mean, realistically eight or nine grand. So last, and, last but not least, the inside, nothing special in here. So I, I uh, kind of, made it last we have the carhartt seat covers which those are pretty basic but it does save your seats uh, all of them come with the weather tech mats and then uh one thing that we've done and i'm going to show this to you this way because it's it's just easier we did replace the um top cab light those are like crappy halogen orange color so we replaced them they're like five bucks on amazon for a pack of 11 totally worth the money makes a huge difference uh we did that and then for all of you guys that don't know right mule deer junkie is officially launched and is live we have our air fresheners on our website you can check those out at www.muledeerjunkie.com link will be in the description and then our hats geez you know so exciting we actually have a lot of our hats finished uh, that's one example of a leather patch camo hat 
and then another love leather patch camo hat we have like 12 or like eight different designs on our website so if you're interested in picking up a hat uh maybe for holiday seasons giving it to your friends and family members you guys we would so appreciate <laughs> so appreciate the support i know that uh you know, I don't post crazy often, but I do post and I really appreciate the love and the support that I do get with an engaged community like you guys have. So please share this video with your friends and family members. Go pick up some air fresheners and hats for this holiday season. Christmas is just right around the corner. It makes an awesome stocking stuffer and an awesome gift uh, and it supports a small business like ours. And the last but not least, if you like these videos, please subscribe to our channel as it does help us out tremendously. Um, if video ideas, anything you guys like to see, shoot them over to me on my uh, Instagram page, at Mule Deer Junkie, and I'll respond to you directly. It's the easiest way to communicate with me. But other than that, you guys, peace out, have a blessed day, and I hope you guys have an awesome holiday season.